Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm going to present our paper bounding box regression with uncertainty for accurate object detection. I'm the first author, Yi Hui He, a Samuel Master student. Why do we need uncertainty? Large-scale object detection datasets like MS, Coco, and Carl Human try to define the ground truth bounding boxes as clear as possible. However, we observe that the ground truth bounding boxes are inherently ambiguous in some cases. Specifically, there are various kinds of ambiguities in these datasets. For example, MS Coco, the most standard object detection dataset. The ambiguity can be introduced by inaccurate labeling. In this case, the tail of the train is not included inside the bounding box. And in this case, the tail of the airplane is not included in the bounding box. The ambiguity can be introduced by occlusion. You can see the trunk of the car. However, it is not inside the bounding box labeled. When the object is partially occluded, the bounding box boundaries are even more unclear. This is an example from YouTube bounding boxes dataset. The left boundary of the train is very hard to draw because of the occluding tree. The ambiguities make it hard to label and hard to learn the bounding box regression functions. Current states via object detectors rely on bounding box regression to localize objects. However, these ambiguities are not modeled in today's framework. Besides, the current bounding box regression is assumed to be accurate when the classification score is high, which is not actually always the case. On the right side, you can notice that the bounding box with higher classification score is not accurately localized. However, the bounding box with lower classification score is well localized. A brief recap on faster RCM pipeline. You have RPN for initial classification and localization. You have fast RCM head which feeds curve entropy and the smooth of and loss for localization. The whole pipeline does not take such ambiguities of the ground truth bounding boxes into account. Therefore, we propose to model localization as a Gaussian distribution. The mean represents most probable location, and the variance represents the uncertainty level. If we trust most annotations in the dataset, the ground truth bounding box can also be formulated as a Gaussian distribution with variance close to zero, which is actually a direct delta function. The goal of object localization in our context is to minimize the KL divergence between the Gaussian distribution and the direct delta function. If the bounding box is localized accurately, the loss encourages variance to be smaller. If the localization is inaccurate, the variance tends to be larger. Expanding the KL divergence, we obtain this. Discarding the irrelevant parts, we obtain our regression loss, we name it KL loss. The architecture for learning this KL loss is very simple. We add an additional fully connected layer for predicting the variance. It has the same dimension as the localization branch. If this has a variance to one, an interesting happens. Our loss becomes a standard Euclidean loss. We argue that the standard loss is a special case of our KL loss. KL loss is able to capture uncertainty while the standard loss cannot. Here are some visualizations. The numbers in the green boxes are the standard deviations we predicted for bounding box boundaries. The variances are interpretable. Higher variance corresponds to inaccurate boundaries. We summarize the benefit of learning with KL loss as two points. First, the ambiguities in a dataset can be successfully captured. The bounding box regressor gets smaller loss from ambiguous bounding boxes. Second, the learned probability distribution is interpretable. Since it reflects the level of uncertainty, of the bounding box prediction. It can potentially be helpful in downstream applications like self-driving cars and robotics. These are more examples. 
The learned variance can be useful during post-processing. For example, the NMS process. We propose variance voting towards the location of a candidate bounding box using its neighbor's location weighted by the predicted variances. We have three principles for voting. Bounding boxes with larger LU gets higher score. And bounding box boundaries with lower variances gets higher score. At last, we try to avoid classification score during the voting so that there is no misalignment between classification score and localization accuracy. Other voting can be applied after the soft NMS process. As shown in the visualizations, before voting, the bounding box with very high confidence, 99%, is badly localized. After voting, it is attracted to the accurate bounding box, even though the accurate bounding box has as low classification score as 35%. These are more examples. Quantitatively, on VGG16 fast RCN, simply training with KL loss improves the average precision by around 3%. Combining with soft MS and variance voting, the performance is further improved. Notice that our variance voting does not conflict with soft MS because soft MS focuses on modifying classification score, while our variance voting focuses on modifying the location. On state of the art RESNA 50 mass RCN, our approach can improve around 2% average precision. If we take a deeper look, we can notice that most improvements come from AP90 and AP80. For AP90, the improvement is 6%. So the training with chaos loss, you can discard the variance prediction part and improve the performance for free. With variance voting, the performance can be further improved with 2 million seconds overhead. Thank you.